So it's official, Wicked Twister at Cedar Point has officially closed. I was not able to ride this, but in today's video let's talk about what can replace it. Just kidding, I'm not doing that. No, what I will talk about is why ride removals can actually be a good thing. So if you're new to this whole theme park enthusiast thing, let me explain what a ride removal is. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, it's when a park removes a ride for a specific reason, and, and I'll get into those reasons as to why they do it, but some of the notable ride removal examples that I can think of in recent history would be Volcano the Blast Coaster, and now, more recently, Wicked Twister at Cedar Point. So now let's kind of break it down, why on earth would a park remove a ride? I mean, if you think about it, it's in a park's best interest to have as many rides and attractions as they can, those bring in the crowds. So why would you close a ride that would just give people less of a reason to attend your park? Well, there are reasons, and let's dive into this. So one of the big reasons that theme parks will choose to remove rides is for financial reasons. So just like any other piece of machinery, roller coasters need to have their parts replaced every now and then, and they'll need constant renovation and upkeep to make sure that the ride runs safely and effectively and efficiently, and sometimes when a ride gets outdated, the ride starts to wear down, which means that the park has to pump more money into the ride just to keep it maintaining and operating the way that it should. But sometimes, the ends don't justify the cost. So in those scenarios, which I suspect is why Wicked Twister and Volcano the Blast Coaster both closed is because the maintenance for these rides just became too much to be fiscally worth the time and effort that it takes. Another reason that a park might choose to remove a ride is because they need that land for something bigger and better. So a lot of landlocked parks, such as Knott's Berry Farm, they don't have a lot of land to work with. What they have is what they have and they've used up all of it. So the only way to add something new is to get rid of something old. One example of a landlocked park that removed something to add something new would be Disney's California Adventure. So they recently removed a Bugs Land to make way for Marvel's Avengers Campus. So this was one example of they removed something because they needed the space for something else. Which also kind of takes me into my next point, is that theme parks will take out irrelevant or outdated attractions to make way for something new to go in their place. So if we look at a Bugs Land, that isn't very culturally relevant anymore. Like, it probably was back when it first opened. Like, wow, look at this latest edge technology, but now it's just kind of a meh, you walk right through it. Um, so they replaced that with Marvel's Avengers Campus, which is a huge IP right now. And if you want to learn more about culturally relevant IP and how they can affect a park's experience, go check out my video where I compare the two parks at the Universal Orlando Resort because I dive into some really good topics regarding IP in that video. Anyways, back to the point. So along with this third point that I make, it isn't necessarily that a ride is just outdated, but it could just be that an attraction is outdated for the park that it is in. So if you take that ride or attraction, put it at a different park, it could fit in completely well, but at the park that is currently at, it's no longer relevant. So a good example of this would be at Epcot in Walt Disney World. They used to have the Wonders of Life Pavilion. If they were to still have it, it would no longer be a good fit. Or you look at Ellen's Energy Adventure. Not only was that ride outdated, because it is, but it's no longer a good fit. Especially as we begin to look for new ways for our energy to develop, the ride would need constant updating, and it just wasn't a good fit for the direction that the park is going in now, which seems to be leaning a lot more towards IP. So I've kind of ruined my next point with all the other points that I've made, but ride removals can actually be a good thing. 
So with these ride removals, especially in landlocked parks, it allows more space for new rides. And with new rides often comes new innovations, which is always a good thing. It keeps everyone moving forwards. It keeps parks competitive with each other as they try and have the new and best thing. And competition is a great thing for us park goers. But even if a theme park isn't able to replace it with something new, at the very least, it allows them to save money that would be used for maintenance and stuff, and it allows them to maintain the rest of their rides and attractions to provide a better quality with the rest of those. If we look at King's Dominion, they have not yet properly replaced Volcano the Blast Coaster. And I say properly because they're adding an SNS 40 freeze bin, but that's not really a replacement. That's just kind of a filler ride, like sorry we took this out here's something for right now we'll get you something better later but for the time being especially after the pandemic the money that is being saved and not having to maintain and upkeep volcano the blast coaster and also i would argue wicked twister can be reinvested into the park into general operations and maintenance for other rides and providing a better quality for the rest of the attractions at these parks now, I want to touch briefly on the subject of rethemes and revitalizing, revamping. Um, so, this is a way for parks to add something kind of new without actually adding a whole lot that is new. So, if we look at Kennywood, they are doing a repainting of Phantom's Revenge. And what I find interesting about this, at least, is that they're letting people decide what color the repainted track will be, which that's pretty cool. And that's not like a full renovation, that's just a repainting. If you want a full renovation, look at Steel Phantom into Phantom's Revenge. That is a complete overhaul and a great use of taking an existing ride and morphing it into something completely new. Another similar example would be Powder Keg at Silver Dollar City. They took the old Buzzsaw Falls, which you can still see part of, which used to be a premier water coaster, and they kept some of the old track, but they added new track and made it into a launch coaster with the help of SNS. So they took an existing ride and made it something completely new. Another way parks can upgrade a roller coaster is by adding a new train. So if we take a look at a lot of the old B&M stand-up coasters, a lot of those have been turned into B&M floorless coasters or B&M sit-down coasters. So that's a way that they can add a new experience. But if we're talking like full-on ride remodel, just take a look at what they are doing with Splash Mountain at the Magic Kingdom and at Disneyland Park. They are taking Splash Mountain, which is a not very culturally relevant IP, and they're remaking it into The Princess and the Frog, which I don't know how good of a fit that is, but that's what they're doing. But ride revamps aren't the point of this video. The point of this video is about ride removals. So how can a park do a ride removal in a good way? I think a great way to do this is to give the ride an official end date if possible. I know Volcano the Blast Coaster, they shut that down with no warning whatsoever. At least with Wicked Twister, they did give a warning saying it will close in September. This gives riders the chance to come and relive their experience, give it one last hoorah before it leaves the park for good. Another thing parks can do is explain why a ride is closing. I think this will help the attendees get less frustrated at the park and understand why they're doing it as opposed to just frustration and disappointment because they closed your favorite ride and you don't know why. And part of that could also go along with if they tease a new attraction. So if it's at like, say a landlocked park and they s explained that something new is coming in its place, that can help attendees to understand why and also give them a reason to look forward to a ride closing. I remember what feels like way back in the day when Busch Gardens announced their new for 2019 roller coaster, Tigris. And they also hinted at Iron Gwazi, which still has yet to open, but that gave people attending this park something to look forward to. And with Iron Gwazi, that was a renovation of a previous attraction, and then we get into the gray area of what qualifies a ride as being a new ride versus a renovated ride, 
I believe that Iron Gwazi is a new ride, but it's all gray area, and you could argue that it's not a new ride because it uses the existing structure. It's all gray. So let's recap. Why would a park remove a ride? For financial reasons, for space reasons, it allows for something new, it could be outdated in the park, but ride removals can be a good thing because they allow for new, they allow for innovation, and they can free up space. So how should a park do a ride removal? Well, give it an end date so people know when they should come and give it the last rides that they can. And then also maybe explain why it closed and what is coming next in its place if they know what's coming in its place. So yes, ride removals can be sad, but they can also be a good thing. I'm not saying that all of them are good things, I'm just saying that they can be a good thing. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this, be sure to let me know. Go live an enthused life and God bless.